Hello and welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. My name is Art, and today I'll be wrapping up my reading for July, specifically for Jane Austen July. It was kind of a, a pretty low-key Jane Austen July for me this year. Uh, I did a buddy read. I did a, kind of a surprise buddy read with Mary from Booking Through Life, and I'll talk about th that book in a minute because that was really enjoyable. So here's uh, here's what I finished out the month with. First of all was Camp Austin by Ted uh, Scheinman. And this is about, uh, as he calls himself, a reluctant, a reluctant Jainite being pulled into, um, as he calls it, my life as an accidental Jane Austen super fan. And I had high hopes for this book. Uh, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. So I ended up only giving it three stars. And I've read a couple of reviews and I found that I wasn't quite alone in that thought that it almost seemed like you know, he didn't really enjoy it overall. He he complained a bit about it. And in the end, I, I really felt like maybe he was not quite the super fan that he wanted to start off, that, that the title implied he would be. You know, he complained about always being cast as Mr. Darcy. He really only went to one or two meetings, at least as described in the book. And primarily the book was about the first uh, Jane Austen society meeting he went to. I don't know. I I, I kind of left me a little disappointed. And as I said, reading over some of the reviews, uh, others felt the same way. Uh, some thought that maybe he was being a bit um, misleading or indulgent, like, you know, a, a grumpy uncle reluctantly having a tea party with his nie young nieces, that he is most certainly not uh, a Jay Knight, as one reviewer said. Uh, they said that he is not a super fan. He is the intellectual sort who finds the Jay Knight culture a bit fanatical and seems to smirk at it throughout. Uh, and I don't know if I'd go that far because he does push back on that idea of a super fan and what a super fan truly is and, and that we shouldn't gatekeep um, who, we're, who we allow in and what we do. I guess I was hoping for more pro male voice in the world of Jane Austen. Uh, but I'm almost afraid that if a guy were to pick this book up to read, it would further confirm his thoughts that Jane Austen wasn't for him. Um, and I, and I kind of disagree with that, uh, obviously, but um, the author does seem to have a, uh, a passion and enjoyment of Jane Austen's works. So that's good. Um, he wasn't spending the whole book just insulting Jane Austen or uh, demeaning her as being just a silly romance book for women. But, uh, you know, there were some good and bad in there. So your mileage may vary with this book. Some of you, depending on your perspective, might have really enjoyed it. Some uh, obviously didn't. I'm kind of right in the middle on it. Uh, so I would give it three stars out of five. Uh, just recently, I picked up another book kind of with the same topic. I think it's called um, Among the Jane Knights by Deborah... Uh, Deborah Yaf, uh, and hopefully I pronounced your name right. Uh, and I'll talk about this in a recent book haul video I did uh, about some books I bought on vacation. Uh, but I'm hoping that this one is more in line with what I was expecting, uh, more of a celebration and a praise for the people who have um, a deep love and fanatical <laughs> obsession with things of, like Jane Austen. Um, certainly count me as one of them. Uh, but I, I feel like I'm nowhere near the hardcore approach that others take. I might be with Dickens, but uh, and I'm working on it with Jane Austen. I would love to go to uh, a, an annual meeting like like what uh, Ted went to and to dress up in the costumes, to to take ballroom lessons, uh, you know, or dancing lessons, to learn about the culture and all that. And, and I, you know, sure, I might be one of the only guys there, but. Um, you know, cast me as Mr. Darcy. I, I think I would make a better um, Mr. Knightley, maybe. Unfortunately, I'd probably come off as a as a Mr. Collins or somebody like that. But oh, uh, whatever. Uh, you know, I I'd be game. Uh, it sounds so fun to me, and what a great privilege it would be to go to something like that. But you know, again, my my thought at the end of the book is that the author really didn't enjoy his experience with it, uh, even though the title and subtitles seems to imply that uh, it was something he enjoyed but i don't know maybe that's that could just be my misinterpretation of it but 
Um, anyway, uh, so I'm going to try out this book. It might be for Jane Austen in July, but I don't know if I can wait that long to read it. Um, so I might read this in August or September. We'll see. Or it could be a real rebel and read it during Victober uh, <laughs> and see, see what kind of trouble I can cause. <laughs> What's next? Oh, and then uh, a, a duology I read, part of a buddy read, uh, was... Uh, the Particular Charm of Miss Jane Austen by Ada Bright and Cass Grafton. And essentially, it, it tells the story of Rosemary Wallace, a modern-day 27-year-old woman and a dedicated Jane Austen fan. And uh, she and her friend are at one of these you know, annual Jane Austen, Jane Austen meetings where she meets a young lady who might just be Jane Austen herself. And through uh, the story, we find that Jane Austen indeed is that mysterious young woman, and uh, she has time traveled uh, to the future. Uh, and I'll leave a lot of that to be kind of a mystery as to how and why it happened, because that's part of the the plot. But that main uh, topic is is uh, not a spoiler. I love this book from chapter one. I'll, I'll read, I'll read the opening paragraph, and uh, we'll see if you can't figure out why. It says, Chapter one, Jane Austen was dead to begin with. You see, as dead as Jacob Marley. As a dodo, as Monty Python's parrot, she too was no more, had ceased to be. If people knew nothing else about her or her life, they knew this irrefutable fact. Not once in 200 years had she drawn breath or set foot on this earth. And I was hooked from the opening, opening sentence. Uh, anybody who can do that masterfully, take the, a well-known quote from Dickens, uh, one of my favorite stories twist it to talk about Jane Austen and then reference it. I don't know. Th this whole opening paragraph just, I'm like, okay, I don't know where this author's taken us, but I'm on board to the end. And it was a delightful, wonderful story about, uh, about fandom, about the love of Jane Austen. Uh, there's some time travel shenanigans and intrigue, timeline changes, all that stuff. But at the end, it is a great story, um, a, a fantastic um, look at the impact that an author can have on a person's life. It, you know, when it looks like Jane Austen stories, a, a mild spoiler here, but part of the, the plot is that um, the time time gets changed and it she uh, Rosemary finds herself in a world that does not know who Jane Austen is. And it's that exploration of how much impact this author had, not just on Rosemary's life, but on society you know, that really spoke to me and my love of, yes, of Jane Austen, but also of like Charles Dickens and what an impact his writings have had in my life and the direction I've taken because of it. You know, the hobbies I pursue, the books I read um, and have enjoyed pouring over over the years. What if they were gone? What kind of a loss that would be to me and to our culture? Uh, you know, because, you know, especially guys like Dickens ha had a, a tremendous impact in um, and speaking up for those who were poor and uh, getting to see laws changed. Um, they had great uh, impact on, on society. Now imagine they're gone. There was uh, a beautiful scene written as well towards the end of the book where Rosemary is, is walking through the uh, Jane Austen Museum and Jane Austen's house and, and just the emotional connect there that she has with that, with that place. It was just really um, resonating with me. Um, other things that delighted me about this series is that it didn't always follow the pattern I thought it would. So the authors really kept you guessing as to what would happen next. You know, things that you thought should happen at the beginning of the story don't happen until later on. And it, it was really cleverly written. And the ending, it, it wraps up the story, but it leaves it on a cliffhanger. It reminded me very similar to the ending of Back to the Future. So Mary and I didn't, uh, we didn't have time to keep reading, uh, you know, book two. Uh, and uh, she said she would read it at a later time. And I thought maybe I would just wait until next year, but I couldn't wait. So I went ahead and uh, picked up book two and read it. And I, I will be very careful about spoilers and talking about book two, because I don't want it to give away anything uh, as to what happens in book one. Needless to say, um, book two is called The Unexpected Past of Miss Jane Austen. And it was just about as equally enjoyable as the first book was. 
and it mostly again will wrap up the story like i felt book one was very much though some of the main plot was resolved i just felt a little more unfinished so i went ahead and read book two and that really i think helped bring uh the story to a conclusion and uh, both books i would give five stars to uh these both are going to be two of the best books i've read all year I, you know, I, I think about what maybe if there's anything about it I, I didn't like, and I, I really can't think of anything. Um, I found the characters to be interesting. Maybe some of them could have been fleshed out more, but uh, overall, I thought it was it was good. I love how they um, characterized Jane Austen. I love how the authors wrote a, a lot about their own personal life and interests into the story, and I wish there would be more. Uh, in the series. I hope there will be more in the series. Uh, the first book was written in 2016, and it looks like the second book was written in 2019. So, uh, you know, based on that three years, um, we should have had a book three out already. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, overall, it tells a self-contained story with just uh, a, a few hints of perhaps more to come. But if not, it tells a good story. And I would really highly recommend these stories uh, for any j Knight out there as it is a celebration of one of the best writers to have ever lived. I guess uh, one thing I would have liked to have seen, and maybe they'll explore this in books to come, is with Jane Austen's grappling with like knowing when she would die and how they will deal, how would she deal with that? And uh, we, I think we get some, hints to it but not a not a whole lot you know that's one of those things about time travel that you have to wonder about would you want to know your fate can you imagine you know going 200 years into the future and finding and ending up in a museum dedicated to you (laughs) you know that's that's one of the shocking I, i would have liked to have seen more from jane austen's perspective but i'm not sure it would have fit in the way they were telling the story if that makes sense maybe we'll get that more in, in, in an, if they write a third book. Because can you imagine going 200 years into the future and then finding yourself landed in a museum dedicated to you? Because when Jane Austen travels, first travels, she isn't a writer. She's still uh, um, a, a young woman. She's maybe has, written, has just started writing, but she has no idea the cultural impact that her stories will have. And then to be suddenly thrust into that world of the Jane Austen Museum and traveling around Bath and seeing all the Jane Austen sites and and bookstores and biographies and books that she hasn't even written yet would have been just crazy (laughs) Um, and shocking. I don't know. How would you deal with that if you went 200 years into the future, you know, and found uh, museums and statues of yourself? Uh, That would be, I think, quite, quite shocking. Although some of you might think, well, of course I would find that. Well, what else would I find? Uh, don't you know who I am? Ego aside, uh, I, I, I think that would be, for anyone, quite a uh, unnerving prospect. Uh, but she takes it in stride. And I think that shows a lot of Jane Austen's strong character. Uh, but uh, like I said, a really enjoyable book. Uh, both books are, are fantastic. I, I would recommend reading both of them. So to the authors, I, I, I would plead to write more in this series. I want, I want to see more Jane Austen traveling adventures, uh, time travel adventures. Isn't it interesting how many books there are about Jane Austen and time travel? Um, there's the Jane Austen Project, another book I enjoyed, I would recommend. Well, that's it for Jane Austen July. Um, I'm grateful for this, uh, this reading challenge. It's fun as always. And no, I have not yet seen the 1995 Pride and Prejudice miniseries. Yes, I know everyone tells me I have to, but maybe I'm being a bit stubborn. I don't want to watch it yet, but uh, I've got other versions I enjoy and want to see. So I might still have some Jane Austen content coming your way. All right. Well, that'll wrap up my time today. Uh, Let me know below what you read for Jane Austen July. What's your favorite book? Would you like to time travel and meet Jane Austen? Uh, I know I would. So uh, until next time, take care, everyone, and happy reading.